Hey guys, I'm Justin Ball, and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a camera or microphone for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. In the last video, I walked you through the properties of sound and some of the terminology describing sound before it enters the microphones. After sound is effectively captured, a whole new world of terminology is introduced. Today, I'll start by walking you through the journey of sound from the microphones to the headphones or speakers and clarifying those differences in terminology. So, if you've heard terms such as line level, preamp, audio interface, gain, signal to noise ratio, sample rate, and bit rate, these are all terms used to describe characteristics of sound after they enter the microphone. First off, what's the difference between sound and audio? The key difference is that sound is made up of mechanical energy, and audio is made up of electrical energy. To understand why, I'll briefly walk you through the audio recording timeline from the microphone all the way to the speakers. When sound enters a microphone, it's converted into an electrical signal, which is measured using voltage decibels. This signal, however, is very weak and is characterized as a mic level signal, which typically sits somewhere between negative 60 and negative 40 voltage decibels. When this signal is coming from an instrument rather than a microphone, it's called an instrument level signal. Instrument signals are stronger than mic level signals, but neither are strong enough to withstand further processing. A preamp converts the signal to a level capable of processing, known as line level, which is equivalent to one volt. Most modern microphones, mixers, audio interfaces, and music equipment in general have preamps built into them, as it's such an important part of producing high quality recordings. After the signal is boosted by the preamp, the audio interface converts the strong electrical signal into a digital signal and sends it to and from a computer for processing. Once the signal reaches the computer, it's processed using a digital audio workstation, or DAW, where it can now be manipulated in a variety of ways, either in the DAW itself or via various plugins. Once the audio has been processed, it can then be played back through speakers or headphones. So, to review, sound enters the microphone, which converts it into a weak mic level signal. The preamp boosts this signal to line level, where it's strong enough to undergo processing. The audio interface converts that signal into a digital signal, which it then sends to the DAW, where it's processed and played back through speakers or headphones. Now let's talk a little bit about signal level and why it's important. Most preamps allow us to manually adjust the level of signal coming in from the mics using what is called gain, which is typically adjusted using knobs on the audio interface. Here's an example of what my voice sounds like when my gain is set too low. And here's an example of what my voice sounds like when my gain is set too high. This is known as distortion, which is the threshold at which electronics can power the signal needed for a certain volume level. Going above this threshold, as I just demonstrated, results in what is known as peaking or clipping. This gain is also sometimes referred to as input level, as we're adjusting the level of sound coming in. Gain is also commonly used when referring to output, meaning the level of sound coming out of the speakers or headphones. In a perfect world, we'd be able to capture only the sounds we want to. While we can't physically eliminate unwanted sounds, modern technology does allow us to get pretty close. There are several different types of noise that we work with in audio recording. There's the most obvious, which is background noise, which, depending on the degree to which it's present, will always show up in any recording. Noise can also be a result of the microphone, preamp, audio interface, or any other part of the audio recording timeline. We refer to the base level of noise generated by an audio device as the noise floor. It's important to choose the right gear in order to push this noise floor as low as possible to ensure high quality recordings. There's also ambient noise or room noise, which is the result of the reflections of sound throughout the surrounding environment. The signal to noise ratio compares the level of a desired signal to the level of noise. To demonstrate this, I've turned on a few fans in the room to simulate background noise, and I've placed the mic about two to three feet away from me, and adjusted my input level to where my voice averages around negative 12 decibels. 
now I've moved the mic closer to me, but to compensate for the increased volume of my voice, I've adjusted my input levels downward to hit that same negative 12 decibel average. You can probably hear that the fan noise is drastically reduced, but how exactly? Well, when I moved the mic closer, it increased the level of my voice, but the background noise stayed the same. By adjusting the level of my voice downward to compensate for the mic being closer, I'm also decreasing the level of background noise, therefore increasing the signal to noise ratio. Now, I mentioned that modern tech allows us to get pretty close to eliminating sounds. While that demonstration is pretty cool, microphones are capable of what is known as directionality or polarity, meaning they can be altered to accept sounds from one direction and reject them from another. So, in the next video, I'll walk you through the different types of microphones, the various polar patterns they're capable of, and some different applications they're commonly applied in with percussion recordings. Until then, happy recording. Thank you.